Hey everyone, welcome back to another midweek motivation. Glad you're with us today and uh, hope you'll be able to join us here in the next little bit. And if not, maybe you'll catch us a little bit later. So I pray your week is going well and I pray that your week is full of joy. Why? Because joy in our lives keeps us strong, right? The joy of the Lord is our strength. So let's continue in this conversation of joy, discovering together what the joy-filled life looks like as described by Paul in his letter uh, to the Philippians. Uh, this week, we are to the second part of chapter 2. And our angle, uh, or the angle I want to present to you, is slightly different today. Uh, what we have this week is this joy-filled man, despite any circumstances, his name's Paul, give his endorsements and high praise of two fellow ministers. And that would be Timothy and Epaphroditus. And let's take a moment and try to find some joy in their examples. Now, before we read this passage, I kind of want to set up a little bit of a theme for you so that as we read it, maybe it'll uh, connect and click in, in, in your head. In giving praise to these two men, I think Paul lets us in on another little secret to living with joy. Joy is found in our devotion to God. Joy is found in our devotion to God. Sometimes you and I, we can devote our time to, to a whole lot of other things, our time and energy and, and a lot of our other resources to things and people that don't last or fall apart or eventually disappoint. But when you and I devote ourselves to the cause of Christ, we find eternal rewards, we find purpose, we find perspective, we find power, we find something that lasts. Therefore, the more devotion you have to God, the more joy you will find. So here's the examples that Paul gives us in uh, chapter 2, verses 19 through 30 of Philippians. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who takes a genuine interest in your welfare, for everyone looks out for his own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself, because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel." I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me, and I'm confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. But I think it necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker, and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you've sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him only, but also on me to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him so that you see him again. You may be glad and I may have less anxiety. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor men like him because he almost died for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for the help you could not give me. What's devotion look like that leads to joy? Let me give you a couple of things. First one is this. The devotion that leads to joy is a devotion that puts others before ourselves. Uh, Paul starts out with giving praise and, and, and thanksgiving for Timothy. And he says, you know, most people look out for themselves, but Timothy takes a genuine interest in you. You know, we know in Scripture the greatest commandments. You remember what Jesus said those were? To love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And the second is like it. And what was the second? Love your neighbor as yourself. Joy comes to us when we practice the commandments of God, especially the, the two greatest ones that uh, Jesus refers to. We flourish when we listen to God's commands, plain and simple, I can't say it any other way. When you lean into what God says about what we should be doing with our lives, it's there we'll find joy. 
and putting others before ourselves is part of that design for God's uh, uh, purposes in your life and in mine. One other thing here too. Want to know the way out of that joy-sucking pity party for yourself? You want to know the, one of the quickest ways out of that? Start serving others. It blows my mind how perspective changes when we get the focus off of, off of ourselves and onto some other people. We find some purpose there, we find some energy there, and we find joy there. So devotion that leads to joy puts others before ourselves. Secondly, devotion that leads to joy is filled with consistency. Uh, we could call that integrity. Timothy, as Paul says, has, quote unquote, proved himself to others. Now, it's not that life won't get messy for us. It's not that we won't fail. But do we have a commitment to getting up again and trying again when we get knocked down? Do we have a commitment to do our best to be authentic and sincere? Always growing our character rather than our images. Listen to that. Let, let me say it again. Do we have a commitment to be challenged by always growing our characters more than our images? That's big. Joy comes when you and I work on our character. Joy comes when there's consistency in our lives. Joy comes when we, we fall down and we, we, we decide to get back up again. When things begin to line up in our lives and we lay our heads down at night and we wake up every day with, with something that, that looks more similar and authentic more and more in our lives, you and I will discover joy. Timothy proved himself to others. And because of that kind of devotion, a devotion to consistency in his life, he can expect joy, just as you and I can expect joy in our lives as we strive toward consistency. One more thing. Devotion that leads to joy is a commitment over comfort. Commitment over comfort. Paul uses the example of Epaphroditus. Uh, you might remember that Paul was in prison in Rome, and the people of Philippi helped Paul by sending him Epap. That's, that's his new nickname. We're going to call him Epap for a few moments. Uh, this man of faith, Epap, helps another man of faith, Paul, who is in prison for his faith. Let that sink in for a minute. A man of faith helps another man of faith who is in prison for his faith. Wow. And he continues to serve Paul even while he is deathly sick. This is commitment. And in fact, we could say, we could add one more word to that. This is risky commitment. Risky commitment that EPAP shows us. But can, can we call faith faith if it's always comfortable and if it's always calculated. You know, unfortunately, our temptation is to live in the calculated and the comfortable. And maybe, just a thought here, maybe that's why we don't find the fullness of joy in our lives. We aren't living out our God-given potential. We're just living lukewarm. Look at what uh, Jesus says in Mark, the Gospel of Mark. It, it's it's uh, chapter 8, uh, verse uh, 35. For whoever wants to save his life, a lot of you know this, for whoever wants to save his life will what? Will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and the Gospel will save it. It's a risky kind of faith, and it's certainly commitment, isn't it? Joy, believe it or not, is found with that committed risk-taking faith through Jesus Christ. So in summary, the more devoted we are to Jesus, the more devoted we are to the gospel message, 
the more joy you and I will find. Paul's words of praise for two ordinary men can be the same words spoken over you and over me. Let's go for that kind of testimony. How about you join me in that? Find joy this week by going deeper with Jesus. You draw close to him, he will draw close to you. And he has something exciting for you. Lean into that. Find some more joy, because that joy is our strength. All right, so uh, I want to tell you all, uh, for those of you that have been connecting to the Wednesday night online Bible study, that has now moved over to Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. So our online Bible study is on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. And there's also an in-person uh, version of that. If you are interested in connecting to that group this next Sunday, contact uh, Pastor Mindy at uh, mindy at eastland.org. And uh, as always, you know, if you guys have prayer requests you want to share with us, share with me, uh, message that to us. Uh, go to, the, to our website, eastland.org, uh, fill out one of those prayer request cards, and uh, our staff looks at that each, uh, each week, and we pray over those things. Uh, hope you're doing well. Keep hanging in there. Keep moving forward. Keep pressing on. You've got this. You're doing this. And uh, certainly when you are weak, he is strong. And through his Holy Spirit, he's got the power to keep, keep things going for you and through you. So uh, hang in there. And uh, as we wrap this time up, let's pray together. Uh, Lord, we thank you again for uh, this week. Uh, for uh, another day that you've given us uh, and help us to see the, the newness of the day. Your mercies are new every day. Your unfailing love is unchanging for us every day and it's amazing, it's overwhelming, it's, it, it's spectacular, God, the love that you have for us and, the, and how you, you reach down to us right where we are at to give us what we need to get through it, to get through it all. Thank you for that today, God. And thank you today, Lord, that as we lean into you, as we uh, devote ourselves to you, as we dig in deeper with you, we find incredible joy. It makes me think of that scripture that says, taste and see that the Lord is good. It, it, it's a challenge to us just to, to try it, to, to, to go for it. And, and Father, I pray this week for some people that might be struggling out there that uh, rather than, than, than running and hiding in their own isolation, that in the middle of that challenge, that they would just draw closer to you and find out that you've got some joy, that you've got some power for them that they never thought was possible. That's who you are, God. It's who you are. And uh, I thank you today that we are loved. I thank you today that you are so good. You are good to us and you are good for us. And your word helps us flourish, helps us to truly find joy. And even as we talked about it today, those two great commandments, love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love others. Help us to do that more. Help us to do that better through your Holy Spirit so that we can live in the center of that sweet spot that you have for us, that center that includes this joy-filled life. Uh, Father, today, uh, just continue to extend that joy and that strength to each one of us, to the churches all around the world that proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. May you make, make that, that church, those churches, the kingdom of God and our witness strong to the world around us. Uh, again, Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for sending your son Jesus to die so that we could have eternal life. And we thank you for the resurrection because without the resurrection, we wouldn't have this faith. We wouldn't have this joy. And it's that resurrection power that continues to live in each one of us today through your Holy Spirit. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, y'all. It was good hanging out again today. And uh, you all take care. Have a great rest of the week. Uh, my granddaughter rolled in last night. I'm excited to spend a couple of days with her and uh, looking forward to some family time. I uh, love you all. Praying for you. And again, if you uh, have any prayer requests, feel free to reach out to us and we'll see you again real soon. Take care. God bless.